actually you brought you brought up Roblox, which is which is super interesting because Roblox is is arguably one of the the metaverses that's picking up or gaining a lot of attraction uh, in terms of corporates jumping in, right? What what would be one of the things that people from the outside don't realize about Roblox? What 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 do they not see and what do corporates see? Why are you getting all these corporates jumping into Roblox and not something like Decentraland, for example? Okay. Well, I mean, they've been around a lot longer mm -hmm. and they've already have the kind of strong user base, right? Uh, Roblox really kind of took off because of COVID, right? Because a lot of people needed to find a place to to kind of beat their loneliness and they're all stuck at home, right? So I think in that sense, Roblox has all of the daily active users and all of the numbers. So for brands, they still need to justify that they're going to spend money to have a design studio mm. to build something elaborate enough, entertaining enough, having awesome gaming mechanisms that the players are going to want to play. So I think those ones have the long-standing metrics and it's been around a lot longer, you know? So I think for brands, um, they choose it because there's simply more eyes on it. But it also depends on what their goal is, right? If they're looking for direct conversion or direct to buy or like, you know, offline buying or something, I think it's not really there yet. It's purely just for brand awareness. Storytelling. Storytelling, yeah. Would you happen to know how much it would typically cost for, let's say, um, a corporate who would be interested in starting their first journey on Roblox? What would be a first step in the door type of project look like? Yeah, so I have talked to other companies and because I'm an ambassador for Exclusible for Roblox Gaming, I have been, I'm, I'm, I'm made aware that the, it depends on how complex it is and if it's going to be a persistent game, if it's going to be a temporary game, if it's going to be just making a wearable, or is it going to be, not right now, but at, sooner you're going to find advertisements in Roblox type of thing. So I think you're looking at roughly at least $200,000 US dollars. Yeah, at least. That's that probably sense. the general amount, right? Um, but I think I've also heard uh, data that for every dollar kids spend on Roblox, Roblox actually spend a dollar forty-five. So right now the conversion is actually like not making money, but is purely just having people come on there and build up that people. Mm. So it's not like you cannot go in there thinking you're gonna make a lot because it may not happen. It really depends on if your players are really interested in what you're doing, the whole campaign and everything. And there's only a few that actually made significant revenues by selling, selling their wearables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's sometimes it's a hit and miss too. You just really don't know what those target audience are oh. gravitating. Yeah. You mentioned before a little bit about defining what you want. Like there's, you just mentioned an example about, you know, selling wearables. How are most brands like what is a common trend for brands right now? Is it just to raise awareness with younger demographic? Is it more so to sell digital skins or how are they really like, what, what, what are they, where are they at right now in terms of the, the yeah. selling? I think um, for most, as far as I know, a lot of brands are just kind of testing right now and finding the kind of right fit, the right audience, the right activation the right gaming style, the mechanism, the right platform, mm. you know? So a good example would be uh, BMW, okay. okay? So BMW, they really are one of the first, I guess, uh, well-known brand to really explore this whole world of Web3. They've done countless different activations across, um, like I think I've been on one on Spatial, which is a very easy to log on. They did some motor ride kind of uh, launch for one of their latest motorcycle product, right? They've done like lots of activations uh, at CES in Las Vegas. They've also done the Ape Fest by bringing their cars here, right? So then they're kind of like touching a little bit all of, of what's going on. But I've been, I've heard and read that they're, they actually have it right because they want to be there at the right time to kind of test these markets. And they also choose the platform by their future target audience, right? So right now, uh, if you're looking at people who ultimately need to buy cars, because that's what BMW sells, right? So they'll probably choose something like Fortnite over Roblox because 
Roblox has technically younger audience, even it. though the age group, I think the, the stats are like not uh, under nine or 12 is like 30 percent. And then something like 12 to 17 is probably a little bit more. And then 25 and above is about 16 percent. So we fit in the 16 percent. Mm. Yeah. But but that's not the right audience, whereas Fortnite has more of the right target audience of 16 to 25, and they're probably going to be more keen to buy the cars at the next stage. So it's really just about uh, um, giving the brand story, getting to know those customers, understanding that what's going to keep them engaged, using their existing inventory of, I suppose if we talk NFTs, kind of stuff that they have so they can customize and personalize their car so they can test it on like a aerial kind of like like a driveway to see how it goes so these are just kind of experience to get their interest so then one day when they are ready they're going to choose bmw over the other car because they've already had that strong kind of connection to the brand but it's not to sell a car the next day right for sure it's it's just to get that